Hey, what did the Diamondbacks do to become successful and make it to the World Series that the Halos could copy and paste? Let's talk about it. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you want to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Angel content, here's how you can do that. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's time to be a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's the best way to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Happy Halloween to our Locked On Everydayers. You've got Locked On Angels where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Johnny, are you uh, a trash panda for Halloween? Is that what you are? Indeed a trash panda. I'm just missing my rocket ship trash can. It didn't arrive in time. So, you know, (laughs) what can I do? What about you? Where's your costume? Uh, I'm Joe Madden. (laughs) <laughs> okay i see it that i work? see it Does that work yeah for you? yeah this is probably great on the audio side johnny is wearing a mask and he has uh raccoon ears and i've got my blue light glasses on that makes me look like joe madden so <laughs> <laughs> and and you know the game has passed you by joe, right? <laughs> yes yes i'm on i'm just doing podcasts that's all i do now. that's right that's all i do <laughs> hey on today's show you know we had a great recap and deep dive into what the rangers did well that took them from a 100 loss team two years ago to being in the world series in 2023. So Mike and I thought it would be a great idea and it was highly requested to do a deep dive into what the diamondbacks do well and see if the halos could essentially copy and paste. And so there's a lot of things, Mike, that I think that the angels could learn from both teams. And on today's show, I'm looking forward to diving into the diamondbacks. So let's start with what do the D backs do well? Well, in, in light of being Joe Madden for uh, Halloween, I'm going to pull you from the show. We're two minutes in. Uh, ah, so let me just it. pull you got out it. and find somebody else to come in. Aaron Loop. <laughs> is Aaron Loop available? <laughs> All right, here we go. Jeff Passan wrote a really great article about the Diamondbacks and what they do well. And here's what we learned. Not shocking. The Diamondbacks built this team through the draft and signing young players to really team-friendly long-term deals. But John, their best work was what they did on the field and their focus on the field. And that's Mm -hmm. where they wanted to prioritize stuff. So let's talk about their offense for a moment. Most teams are about launch angles and home runs. That sounds familiar. (laughs) The Diamondbacks are not. They do not rely on home runs. They only had four players with double-digit home runs. And they focused on more of a complete player. They had a team OPS of 730. Mm -hmm. And they, they wanted to make sure that When they had a hitter up, the hitter knew what the circumstances were and what they needed in that moment. And if they needed a single or a double, they really were just trying to make contact. That was their priority when they came to the plate this season. And let's be clear that on base plus slugging, a a legit OPS is about 800. Yeah, That's where you want to see a player. So for the fact that the team overall was 730, that's really impressive for a team OPS. Remember, it kind of encapsulate how much it caps encapsulates how much offensive production yeah. that a player is putting out there in terms of getting on base, whether that's via the hit, the single, the slugger, you know that sort of thing. And so, th- the fact that they're seven thirty uh, as a team is really impressive. Yeah, and not because they hit a bunch of home runs, but because they had timely hits and and made made the right play in the right moment and that's why they were so successful this last season and another reason john was how they ran the bases two specific things that jeff passon points out is the diamondbacks steal bases and mm-hmm. of course the bases are a bit bigger this year and with the time clock it gave the advantage to the base runner and i i think that the diamondbacks were smart in yeah. taking advantage of that 100%. they were second in the nl with 166 stolen bases corbin carroll had 54 of those 166 stolen bases. Yeah. Remember when Mike Trout used to steal a lot of bases? That? <laughs> the good old days. That was a that was a fun time. And then, John, because they're a team that would spread the ball everywhere and they wouldn't hit for launch angle, but just try to go gap to gap, the Diamondbacks could also take extra bases. And That's they huge. focused often on going first to third as often as they can. And then I love this little nugget. They would try to tag up at any moment from any base at any time they would try to tag up 
And the purpose was to put pressure on the pitcher, put pressure on the infielders, and put pressure on the outfielders. They they really wanted the defense to feel this anxiety. Like, what are they going to do next? Where are they going to go next? And yeah. they wanted them to be off their game and have their mind focused on something else. And you saw it take place this season with the way that they played offensively, hitting and running the bases. Yeah, when, and to, for them to come into 2023 knowing about the new rules, knowing about the pitch clock, knowing about the stolen bases, or I should say the bigger bags to get stolen bases. Yeah, um, it, it it's what a what a great approach to 2023, Mike. They they adjusted their game plan and they made that putting the pressure on the pitcher their emphasis. And I think that that's a brilliant way to go about the fact that, you know, there were new rules in 2023. And doesn't that seem obvious? Like, wouldn't that be yeah. what everybody would, would talk about? I wonder why some teams didn't specifically like with the angels, un unless they didn't want to go away from their philosophy, but with all of these new advantages, I get it was only the first year, but why not try to take advantage of it? Because the diamondbacks are a, a great example of what happens when you go, Hey, let's see what we can do stealing bags let's see what we can do taking the extra base it would it, it doesn't make sense not to not to at least try it right i think i think everybody was so focused on the lack of a shift that they were worried about defense and they're starting mm. pitching i mean look the the cardinals are a great example of a team that didn't True. make adjustments and they let all their pitch to contact guys run that rotation and you know look where it got them because there there wasn't an adjustment for the shift unfortunately and then you know they the word was at the beginning of the season that you know, Alex Taman and Perry Manassian didn't really want the guys to be in motion and steal bags and all of that. And and so it really went against what the Diamondbacks had decided to do coming into yeah. this season. Uh, yeah. You know, like the, the D-backs, they, they bunted and they bunted often. You check your diabetes and you check your what, – what, what's the blood sugar? You check your blood sugar and you check it often. <laughs> I miss those commercials. <laughs> <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> uh, but they bunted and they bunted often. And we saw that in game two of the World Series. They had three sacrifice bunts. And you yeah. know where a lot of them came from, Mike? Evan Longoria. Yeah. Freaking Evan Longoria. I was actually, I missed what a veteran. game two. So I went back and I was reading like through the plays for each inning. And it was like, Evan Longoria, sacrifice bunt. Evan Longoria, bunts to third. And, you know, I was just like, what? Like, yeah, moving runners over and advancing them. And, and even at his age at his age as if he's like super old but he's been around the league for forever <laughs> yeah. yeah and and even he can recognize and be part of this strategy that the diamondbacks have put together he's part of that strategy so well and, this and, is and who they are and they're not ashamed of it either. and there's no ego and i know that you can't measure that right. right you can't you can't strategize for that and that's the problem with the angels versus it's not a problem with the diamondbacks at least this season is the Angels with Rendon. There's there's obviously an ego there. And mm -hmm. with Evan Longoria, who's been around for a really long time, he doesn't have an ego. Yeah, I'll bunt. Yeah, I'll move runners over. Yeah, if that's what I need to do. And he played some really great defense, which we'll talk about in the second segment. But he is somebody that you long for on your team. I would say that Longoria on the Diamondbacks was like Mike Moustakis on our team, although mm. Mike Moustakis didn't perform like Longoria did. But I think mm -hmm. that that's what Moustakis brought to our team this season. And perhaps if they were able to make the playoffs, I could see Mike being somebody that would have a major impact in the playoffs if the Angels got there. Absolutely. Uh, finally, you know, the offense, uh, offense, they operated with an attention to detail that forces opponents to make plays and punishes them if they don't. I love mm -hmm. that concept. And mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound like a little old team that we know very well, the <laughs> 2002 Angels? I mean, Mike, this, as far as a concept goes, and for them to do it 21 years later, it's uh, it's essentially like it's 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 old school small ball, yeah, baseball. It's being aggressive on the base paths. It's putting pressure on the pitcher to put them in the hot seat rather than the hitter in the hot seat. I can't remember the quote that we talked about. It might have been Mike Moustakis. It was. I know what you're going to say. It yeah, was it was. It yep. was in the in the moment when there's runners on and the pressure's on. Moustakis is in the driver's seat, not right. the pitcher. Right. The pitcher's the one who has to get out of the jam at the end of the day. Yep, absolutely. And that's what you saw from the O2 Angels is they had this crazy phonetic hitting where they just got hit after hit after hit. And you see it with the Diamondbacks as they're playing in the playoffs and in the World Series. And the Angels had glimpses of that this season where mm -hmm. they would score in bunches, but it did kind of feel like they were, and I would say kind of, I'm going to take that word out of there. It did feel like they were sitting back waiting for 
the big hit instead of moving runners over, right? And g- hitting gap to gap and maybe then getting the home run if they're lucky. And That's it the like issue. they were looking for the home run first, right? That's the issue with the attack the zone approach. And they're looking for the right pitch. And to be fair, their attack the zone approach worked for them, but not in all situations. I yeah. mean, you and I ran the numbers, I think before the end of the season, just to see like, hey, is this did this strategy work for the Angels? And for the most part, it did, but it was the situational hitting where they fell short because they were still trying to find that perfect pitch that's yeah. going to be in the zone that they can drive out of the park when it's like, no, if there's a fastball outside on the edge, hit it the other way. And I right. think I think that's what the Angels ran into. And I know that RBIs are uh, a stat that many people kind of just poo-poo and push aside, but I think that they're very telling when you have a whole lot of home runs, but the RBIs not, yeah. are not – maybe doubled of what the home runs right. are, right? Sure. Like even, even with Trouty two years ago, 40 home runs, but he had, I think 80 RBIs, I think yeah. 80 or 90 RBIs. And even this season with Otani 41 home runs and, and maybe a hundred some odd RBIs. Like, like th- there was opportunities where they could have had more runs scored if they moved some runners over and Otani was up and keep key moments, but because they had a lot of strikeouts and because they had a lot of pop-ups and they weren't coming through in those moments, Otani all the pressure was on him to have yeah. to come through. And he did come through in a lot of moments, but a lot of those base runners weren't on base because they did the attack the approach, uh, attack the first pitch approach and hit into double plays. And it wasn't, it wasn't good for runners in scoring position. Yeah. You got to be able to work counts. And I think that that's something else that the diamondbacks are succe- successful yeah. in doing right. Yeah. Uh, hey, coming up uh, on locked on angels, how was the relationship between the diamondbacks manager and the front office? And how did that play? into their success. We're going to tell you all about that coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. You can score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet, a winning $5 money line bet. Let's That's go. 150 bucks if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, now's the best time to do that. You can get in on all of the action. The app's so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. John and I talked on yesterday's show about how when your team's really terrible, why not just be on FanDuel? Because it'll help you to pay attention, right? Is Jake <laughs> Moody going to make this field goal? <laughs> Who knows? Over, Jake Moody under. is putting me in a Moody. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> when you have good kickers sitting just on the sidelines. Robbie Gould doesn't have anything. a job. What's, what's happening? That's interesting he doesn't have a job, right? I wonder what the money line is on Robbie Gould coming back. I don't no know. Kidding. Check out FanDuel. They'll they'll let you know. FanDuel.com slash locked on is where you can get started and kick off this NFL season. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Hey, Locked On Every Day, as you know, that every Friday is fan mail Friday. So we'd love to get your questions in and you can send those to us, whether it's a, a comment on YouTube in the, in the comments below the video, you can also reach us at locked on angels on Twitter. You can send us a direct message. If you want to, you can do the same on Instagram at super halo bros and on Twitter as well. And if you're interested in giving us a call, our voicemail line is available to you 24 seven, leave us a 30 second voicemail. That number is in the episode description below. So get your questions in for Fan Mail Friday, and we'll gladly answer them this Friday. Because the D-backs were uh, paying really close attention to detail, they were really good, not just offensively, but defensively. And their goal had uh, three, three achievements, three things that they wanted to accomplish. First, on defense, they wanted to get the easy out. Mm. And so I, I love that. That seems pretty logical, right? That's what sure. you do. Throw to first, even though the runner is moving over to third or they're coming home, you get the out, right? The, the second thing is they, on defense, focused on not extending the inning, mm-hmm. meaning that they're always going to try to make sure that they get the three outs when they're given the three outs. They're not trying to be magicians out there. They're not trying to make the spectacular play, although they can make a spectacular play, but their focus was to try not to extend the inning and to support their pitchers. And then I, I loved, I love this one. Number three was make the first right play, mm. make the first right play. And the results of it, Johnny was pretty tremendous. Arizona committed just 56 errors. 
the hmm. second fewest by any team in baseball history. Really? This last yes. Wow, that's huge. Okay, let me let me be a, a an analytical nerd here for okay. just a minute, Buckle so up. that so that I can explain <laughs> how the things that you just described don't extend the inning, get the easy out, make the first right play. Those are instinctual baseball actions, right, Mike? Those are the things that you need to do as a professional baseball player. But analytically, and this is why the Diamondbacks probably came to those conclusions for their three defensive points, is because you extend the inning. Look at Patrick Sandoval, for example. Look at how efficient he could be until there was an error made. Yeah. Then the guy, or maybe it's Reed Detmers or somebody else, ends up throwing 20 more pitches to finish the inning when they should have been out of it 20, 25 pitches ago. I think that that's a huge part. And then you see what happens to your pitcher when you do extend the inning. It's, it's, it's a, it's all there in the data. So the data kind of comes after, but I'm sure they looked at what happens in those situations when they did extend the play and when they didn't make the right throw to the right bag or didn't take the easy out. They look at the results of those things and went, Hey, you know what? Those are the three points that we need to emphasize. And the fact is Mike, the angels led the league in unearned runs this season. They also had a lot of errors committed in the field. And again, just like I mentioned, that was followed by a lot of walks. And so while Reed Detmers could easily have gotten one guy out of the inning, Maybe the next batter is a little bit more competitive at the plate, and that's what yields a walk or a base hit or a 10, 12 pitch at bat. So if they're extending the inning by not taking the easy bag or not taking the easy out or not making the right play, you're putting a lot of pressure on your pitcher. And it's almost it almost goes against the offensive thing that the Diamondbacks did, where they are putting pressure on the other teams pitcher yes. and then they're doing everything they can as a defense to take the pressure off their own pitcher i just man what a smart move at the end yeah. of the day yeah this is how you use analytics analytics right like this yeah. is what you do analytics those, too analytics as well <laughs> this is how you use those numbers and i know that there are some people who are like i'm a traditionalist and i want to just have you know let's look at the guy and let's do that and then there's some people like no the analytics are really great i i think and we'll talk about this in the last segment i think that meshing both of those things together in a very smart brilliant intelligent way this is the way you do it obviously has a great effect on your team and to be able to identify those things, Johnny, and to be able to say like, Hey, here's what this does. And then I love that they communicated it so clearly in very simple ways. The Rangers mm-hmm. did that as well. And, and remember good data and then take home data. And, yeah. and then the same thing with the diamondbacks. They're like, Hey, here's three things we're going to tell our defensive players to do. We, we want them to get the easy out. We want them to not extend the inning and we want them to make the first right play. And I, and mm-hmm. I love that. And it's, that's easily coachable. Now you mentioned instincts. Yes. You have to have baseball instincts, but right. you're in the major leagues, right? So you obviously have some baseball instincts. And so what you communicate to your players, grown adults that have been playing for a really long time is very simple things, very simple strategies, very simple. Here's what you do. And Obviously, they were disciplined enough to be able to follow that. They were disciplined enough to be able to put that into practice. And you saw the results. Now, I know Mm -hmm. that 84 wins is not super attractive. And you'd probably rather win 90 to 100 games. But what the Diamondbacks have done in the regular season, it translated to the postseason. And that's where a lot of those 100 team win, 100 victory teams, they they struggled in the postseason because they almost had to adjust their strategy and adjust their approach when they got into the playoffs. Johnny, the Diamondbacks didn't have to do that at all. At least at this point, you haven't seen any adjustments. They've been who they've been for 162 games in the regular season. I'll I'll push back on that a little bit and not to say that the Diamondbacks aren't continuing to be who they are. But Mike, do you want to know the definition of a hot team, a team that gets hot, especially during the playoffs? It's the Diamondbacks when they're hitting five home runs off Lance Lynn. And I know it's Lance Lynn, and I know that he's serving up meatballs. But the fact is, this team, like we mentioned before, was not a home run hitting team. Right. So they continued to do the things that they do well and got lucky and hit a bunch of home runs in the postseason, right? And so it, it only goes to show that, like, 
stick to your stick to your principles and then as you get hot and you roll into the postseason maybe you'll get lucky and and hit out five home runs in right. a game or go right. back to back and do some things that are like out of character for you not because you're trying to but because you're doing a good job at hitting at the plate right and and to throw it back to the 2002 angels they had a lot of those similarities think adam kennedy against mm-hmm. the twins in yes. the alcs right like <laughs> when when did he hit three home runs right. ever, ever? In, a, in a game right <laughs> and he does it in the playoffs but i think that to your point and and i get you were trying to push back i just think that you affirmed my point but i think that what the diamondbacks have done is they were consistent they stayed within themselves and then of course it's baseball you're going to have moments where you get a good pitch and you swing and you make really good contact. Yes. I don't want to call it lucky. I want to call it, I want to call it talent. That's what I want to call it. <laughs> right? so and excited. So you hit your mic. I hit my microphone. <laughs> I talk with my hands. Right. And so th- that's, that's the thing that I love about what this team has done specifically on the defensive side, Johnny, the angels need a whole lot of help on the defensive side. And I know we have Neto and I know we have Sean Owell at first, and I know we have Moniac and of course trout's been solid in the outfield, but the truth is, is that these three components, I think, would have given the Angels a swing and maybe a, a, a 10 to 15 win swing this last season because of all the errors and all of the mental games that happened on the mound after those errors with the pitching staff, right? Yeah, I mean, at least five to 10, if not 10 to 15. I mean, yeah. it would have been it would have been enough to, you know, make the wild card a lot more interesting. Mike, I, I know you mentioned 84 wins for this team, but that's here's the thing MLB decided to do that. Right. They decided yeah. oh, to yeah. make it easier for teams to get in. Like <laughs> they're Toyota. We make it easy right. on you. Like, and, and the angels couldn't do it. They couldn't even do that. that. The angels like, still. <laughs> they still couldn't do it. And yeah. it's ridiculous, man. And, and so the, and I understand that it took more than 84 in the American league to get there. But at the same time, this is why, our approach all season was like, eh, 90 wins could do it. And yeah. I think it ended up being what, 89 got them into the into the wild card. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you get there. It's that you did get there. And once you get to the postseason, it's an entirely game on. different game. Exactly. So uh, props to the Diamondbacks for taking taking that 84 win season and turning it in to something special. Johnny, one of the biggest things about the Rangers front office is that there was a synergy between the front office and the dugout, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> guess, guess what? Same thing's true with the Diamondbacks. <laughs> they, have, they have a great relationship. And the, and the big piece to the Diamondbacks' success was Tori Lovello and Mike Hazen's friendship. Now, there's one factor here that you just you can't plan for and you wouldn't want to plan for it. Mm. It can never be a part of a strategy. And it was the fact that Mike's wife, Nicole, passed away in mm. August of 2020, 22. Uh, she was fighting brain cancer for more than two years and mm. then tragically passed away. John, that bonded Tori Lovello and Mike Hazen. Like they wow. became friends, more intimate friends during that time. And the truth is, is that the I think the intimacy between them and the camaraderie and the respect between them, plus they were there for each other in a really tragic moment, yeah. only worked towards what was already there. And that's the thing. It wasn't that this tragedy fixed everything. What yeah. was already there was a great kinship and a great relationship, a great friendship between the general manager and the the manager and that's something that the angels have missed quite frankly like that's something that we've said often as perry has been here he hasn't really been able to pick his guy or his guys right right and and over the last 12 years it's been manager gm new manager new gm and so there's never been any cohesion from the front office to the manager in the dugout that look they they work together more often to build a strong team of baseball players that fit the traditional model and were open to the modern approach. And this is Passon's article. Again, he continued, uh, here's how he described it. If their roster doesn't suit the pervasive style of baseball played these days, they figure out how the information analytics offers them can best suit them. It's the sort of pragmatism, pragmatism perhaps best seen in something as simple as as defense, like we just mm. talked about when a team's mm-hmm. offense lacks the firepower to Homer, it's way to wins. The little things matter exponentially more. So from the beginning of spring training, 
Lavello preached the the importance of playing clean baseball and the message took. I love hmm. that. Yeah. And and that's that's what you need, right? From the very beginning in spring training, here's the team that we're going to be. And even before spring training in the off season, here's the team that we're going to put on the field. Now, the Diamondbacks aren't immune to some of those modern ways of looking at the game Johnny they did have moments where they regularly pulled their starting pitchers when they were going to face the lineup the third time through so mm-hmm. there were some of those things and then ask ask Diamondback fans and in fact ask our friend over at Locked on Diamondbacks like there were moments where they were really frustrated with that just yeah. like we were frustrated with that they pulled a Joe Madden is what we call it around here right can I can but- I say that there was a uh, a YouTube commenter the other day and he said hey guys I'm I'm a Mariners fan popping in which I was I was shocked by the way and he said <laughs> You know, from the outside looking in, what what are the angels? Mm. What's their identity? Mm. And I was like, great question. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. He goes, at least he goes with our team. Like, you know, we're not going to we know we're not going to sign big free agents like we know this and we know that. And and to, to have Lavello preach the importance of clean baseball from day one in spring training, it makes me wonder, you know, did did Phil Nevin and company say like this is the kind of team that we're going to be because if a manager does that, I think it leads to a lot of success so that you have an identity from day one and you don't get away from that identity. Johnny, I don't think a lot of leaders know how to do that Hmm. quite frankly. And, and, and when you come, when it comes to baseball specifically, it almost might feel like what we do, what are we doing this for? Right. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's always a crowd that will say, well, why are we talking about vision and why are we talking about strategy? And why are we talking (laughs) about like, there's always a crowd that will talk about that. And I get it because Sometimes it can feel pretty wasted, but from a leadership standpoint, it's not wasted at all because your vision dictates where you're going and your values dictate how you get there. Mm -hmm. And so I think with Phil Nevin and, and I don't know him like, you know, the players know him, but I think with Phil Nevin, I don't, I don't, he doesn't strike me as a guy who would come in and go, all right, here's who we're going to be. Yeah. Right? I think he well, it's, in. it's hard to do on a one year deal as well. That is too, true. And it's kind of like, Hey, Phil, you, you want the job? Like, yeah. I, I don't think that that's a very uh, good foot to start on. And not sure. But he did him. have, he did have the full season and he did have half of last season as well. I, I think no matter what, Johnny, if, if you have a job for a year and you're, 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 you're almost trying to like flex a little bit, mm-hmm. wouldn't you throw all of your muscle at everything that you can do? Like it would make sense to me coming into spring training and going, listen, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be here next year, but this year you're going to be created in the image of Phil Nevin. Yeah. No, I get that. And I think it makes a lot of sense. I just, it, it, it's almost like, did he still have Joe Madden's team and Joe Madden's mindset sure. and, sure. you know, what's being passed down from the front office and what they yeah. want him to do? Is it Alex Taman's team? Was it, was it Perry Manassian's team? That's again, Mike, we don't have clarity on any yeah. of that. Yeah. And that, and that's part of the relationship that happens from the front office to the dugout. I, I loved what the Diamondbacks setup man said. He said, uh, we play old school baseball. We did things a little bit differently. We run the base as well. We play really good defense. We focus on bunts, bunt defense. Everybody takes accountability for that. That's something I think the angels lacked. Uh, That's a credit to our coaching. Huh? How about that? Mm. And that's a credit to our leadership. Huh? How about that? And that's (laughs) a credit to everybody because everybody takes pride in this. There's one thing that happens often in the, in the job that I do. We say often, and and I'll, I'll I'll remind our team pretty often is if, if the whole thing's not working, then your thing's not going to work. And, and and that's something that I think that the, the Diamondbacks were able to communicate really well to their team. And it's obviously had great effect. It's obvious, obviously got them to the World Series, which is always the goal. And in fact, right. winning the World Series is, is the goal. Johnny, can the Angels find this? And 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 if, if they have to make some really tough moves, should they? Like, for example, they sign and hire a coach and they give them a th- – a three-year deal. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's necessary for Perry Manassian to get a two-year extension on his deal? Like to me, that would make sense because then you have these guys running congruently instead of going, well, Perry, you're going to be here next year because I've got three years here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look, if, if that's what it comes down to, to have synergy, then, then yes. I mean, it has to go down that way, but that's, that's the problem. Like nothing has ever lined up for the angels and it's their own fault. They keep, they, they, they don't have managers who get picked by their GMs yep. and they don't have enough. They, they have, they don't have enough time to implement a plan and let it cook and let it marinate Yeah, because they're always trying to get to the playoffs. 
They're always trying to be something they're not. And I think that it's a, it's a tired, it's like, what's the, who's the guy who pushes the rock up the hill and in like Greek mythology and yeah. it rolls down the hill again. That's what the angels are. Yeah. And, and the fact that nothing has ever lined up for this team is their own fault at yeah. the end of the day. So I, I don't think that um, they're, they're going to think that through. I mean, I'm sure that's a question that's on everybody's mind right now, but to have cohesion, the, the GM, the front office and the manager all have to be on the same page. Can I just one, one last note here, Mike, that really yep. drives home <laughs> who the angels are and who the diamondbacks are. Yep. Uh, the diamondbacks, they, got all of their employees traveled to Texas to watch the first game of the world series. Yeah. They, yeah. they brought out all of their employees to come watch that game. Bravo. In what, what world? What a move. Would that ever happen with the angels? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't see that happening whatsoever. You want to come over and watch the world series from my, uh, clothes hamper. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no that would be Artie's invitation, right? <laughs> Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Locked On Everydayers, we're here Monday through Friday, and we would love for you to join us and and make sure that you reach out to us because we would love to hear from you because Fan Mail Friday is coming up on Friday. Johnny, how can they reach out to us and talk with us during the week? Yeah, get at us at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. We always have the latest episode available there for you. So if you're looking for the latest and greatest Check out our feed. It's right there for you. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Tomorrow's show is going to be great because you and I have been longtime fans of the Angels, and so mm-hmm. I want to invite those longtime fans to join us. And if you're new to the Angels, come and and, and be a part of this longtime fan conversation. John and I are going to share some super Halo Brother wisdom with the Angel front office, with the players, and with Artie himself. Don't miss that conversation tomorrow on Locked on Angels. I'm looking forward to it. It's kind of a, a fill-in-the-blank conversation it's gonna be fun so we want to hear your answers as well all right friends until tomorrow's show my name is john and that's my brother mike and my name is mike and that's my brother john thanks for being here with us and we'll see you back here tomorrow take this mask off finally (laughs) killing me happy halloween i guess